Welcome back to the Ed Morrissey Show podcast edition, and uh, great to be back with you. Uh, we, 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 we've transitioned at hotair.com, and here to talk about that, plus many other things, is our usual Tuesday co-host of the podcast, the prince of Twitter, the regent of redstate.com, Andrew Malcolm. Great to have you with us today, and man, I'm telling you, I, I am... <laughs> I am busier than a one-legged man in a butt-kicking contest these days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you should be. Uh, it's a, what a great honor. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, it is an honor. I'm very happy to be made uh, managing editor. That was officially done a few weeks ago, but of course, now I'm really running the site by myself uh, starting over the weekend. And so we've made a, we've made, uh, a few changes. There's more changes coming. Um. But some of the changes that people started noticing over the weekend was I took over the headlines, that the mar headline marquee that's in right below the top post, uh, which we've expanded today. We've added a uh, we've added a new row of headlines, so there'll be more headlines up on the site for longer, um, and um, there's just going to be more headlines. Period. I'm actually doing them a little bit of a tighter churn, uh, at least, and we'll see how that works. <laughs> <laughs> see how much work that actually is for me to do. But so far, it's been a blast. And people started noticing over the weekend that we've really changed directions there, Andrew. And what I want to do <clears throat> coming into the midterm cycle is really um, connect the conservative, uh, the conservative commentary. And, and it have been a wide range of voices here. I, I don't want it to be an echo chamber. But what I want to do is really focus on that because I think, Andrew, and maybe you, maybe you uh, agree with this or not. I'm pretty sure people know where to find the Washington Post, NPR, <laughs> and CNN. Andrew, are you there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I was just saying. I mean, I I think that we might might have had a little yeah, glitch there. Yeah. That that they know where to find it and what Ed. So well, what? And and so they can go there. <laughs> You know, when, when we have breaking news, obviously, we're, we'll pop the breaking news into the headlines because that's part of what that's about. But the idea here is I want to give people a really good look at all of the different, um, you know, all of the different websites yeah. out there that are that are doing conservative commentary or even even center commentary, libertarian yeah. commentary. Um, and and again, I, I think that that's a a better way to connect us into. Um, what's going to happen in the midterms and a better way for people to find other voices for other voices to find us. Oh, exactly right. That's wonderful. The, the idea that we all exist in a vacuum um, should have died a long time ago. Uh, and, um, you know, I, <laughs> I was in a meeting. This is some years back when I was, uh, well, I founded the uh, top of the ticket conservative blog on the LA Times and uh, I was talking about posting a certain item, and uh, one of the print editors said, wait, you mean you would actually put that up because you knew people would want to read it? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, quote, you bet your sweet ass, John. And <laughs> he's no longer in the print business because he just didn't get it. Um, and I, the idea that there is this array of sites, um, a, a veritable panoply of, of, of conservative opinion sites, Ed. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a bunch of, stu of good stuff at Town Hall, and they have at the bottom the, the big uh, readers uh, on, on their various sites. But there's so many. There's so many that we can uh, we become a very loud voice when people get connected. And I know Hot Air Red State has a twice a day newsletter, and, and Hot Air has one where people can sign up. And instead of having to go look for for uh, posts, they get them sent right to their direct to their email uh, every day. And and to me, that's a that saves time. You don't have to go looking or to remember to go looking. And uh, if people support conservative sites, and I, I know this isn't a com uh, commercial for for VIP, but oh no, please, uh, 
Please, please, please <laughs> but, continue, but Andrew. If, <laughs> if, if people sign up for VIP, it, uh, it, it turns out to be with the discounts they're offering these days, town hall, uh, it, it's, it's less than a Starbucks a month. Uh, and it supports conservative commentary uh, and resists the censorship, the ongoing, often invisible censorship of big tech. Uh, and um, uh, that's the only way that these sites are going to survive. Uh, and, you know, people are accustomed to freebies. Uh, but uh, I think if they're willing to chip in for the extra depth that they get in your uh, VIP pieces. Well, you know, and, and look, we're still going to do a lot of stuff in the clear, too. I mean, so it's, uh, you know, we're we're trying to keep a, a good balance of plenty of free, you know, free posts out there, free analyses. Uh, plus, it, what I want to do with VIP is really do value add. I mean, you're a value add over at Red State, right? Because you're the prince of Twitter. You are the regent of redstate.com. I mean, you're, you're a value add. You're, you're somebody who is coming in and bringing a fresh perspective. Um, and prior to this, you know, our VIP section was really just us being a little bit more editorial than we might normally be in, in other contexts. But I really wanted to bring in some fresh content. We've still got fresh content to come. By the time that this, uh, podcast goes up, people will have already seen, uh, Dwayne Patterson's VIP post for this morning. And so he's a new contributor to the hot air VIP, um, realm. We also were going and to, he's have, good. He's, he's really good. He's really good. And look, I mean, he gets a lot of insight from the people he talks to as producer of the Hugh Hewitt show. And so he's talking to the newsmakers behind the scenes, you know, where he's getting information that doesn't necessarily come out on air, but Dwayne has this information and he can, he can analyze things based on insider information. So, you know, Dwayne's part in this is going to be absolutely fantastic for us. Um, and I, I don't know if you know Tom Jackson out of Florida. Tom Jackson wrote for for many years at the Tampa uh, Tampa Tribune, and um, he is going to he's joining us today. Uh, he's going to give us his thoughts on Florida's politics in this oh, midterm cycle. Be, what a winner this fall, huh? Oh man, I'm telling you. I mean, this is uh, Florida is a is a major. Uh, piece of what we're doing uh, this year and also in 2024. I mean, Florida is going to be super important in 2024. And Tom is is going to is going to give us a frontline look at this. In fact, uh, you know, Tom is a uh, is a guy I met when I was doing my book, you know, the 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 book Going Red uh, by Ed oh, Morrissey. Yes, I can <laughs> see it there. People, I think, can still order it on Amazon. I think you can. I think you can still order it on Amazon. Audio, you know, you you, Kindle. You talk about you talk about Florida being important. I seem to recall since I was involved in the Bush campaign, yep. uh, two thousand. That was a rather important state. It was, and look, I mean, it's redder than it used to be, but that doesn't mean that it's 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 going to fall into Republican hands all on its own. And I mean, certainly in this case, you know, Charlie Crist is. Is um, probably not piece going to be. He's a this, piece of work. He's yeah, a piece of work. <laughs> he's a piece of work. But it's still going to be an interesting campaign. And and in fact, Tom's first post, which is probably up by the time that this podcast actually gets published today, is something to the effect that he's a repentant former Christ believer. And I mean, it's really an amusing. <laughs> it's really an amusing ride. You have to, but you have to be a VIP member to read it. Um, we're going to have other VIP editors. I've got, uh, Chris Queen over at PJ Media, who's got a piece on deck. We'll probably run it tomorrow. Uh, Dwayne's got another piece written and he's already working on a third piece. Uh, so I might have to space him out for, you know, over the next week or so. Um, we're going to have, um, eventually we're going to get Larry O'Connor in here to do some VIP content with us. We're wow. going to, yeah, I mean, we're really going to have, it's going to be different. The VIP space, plus there's a big surprise that's coming and I can't say any more than that, but it's a very big surprise and it's going to be awesome. And that will be later this week and it will be a regular feature in VIP. And, uh, you guys are going to, oh, you guys are really going to love it. That's all I can say. Good thing. It's a good thing. I'm a VIP subscriber. It is a good thing. You're a VIP subscriber. You're going to be very happy being a VIP subscriber, <laughs> but I mean, I mean, but beyond the, beyond the subscription thing. Buy a subscription. But beyond the subscription thing, uh, look, I mean, the idea here is to give our members, you know, more depth 
more content, more interesting content, more unique content. That's going to be happening. But at the same time, we're also going to give all the rest of our readers more depth, more interesting content. So we've added some um, some new voices. Um, Boy, I guess. Yeah, Jeez. I mean, we we're going to have David Strom start. And David's an old friend of mine. We've known each other for probably twenty years. Um, he wasn't a member of the Northern Alliance Radio Network, but he was part of that sort of social group um, that was formed up in Minnesota. And he's smart as a whip, uh, a good writer, really wants to focus on culture. He was more of a policy guy when he was at the Taxpayers League up in Minnesota. Uh, but um, he really wants to focus on cultural issues because he thinks that that's where um, conservatives really need to focus because that's the th those are the unifying threads for conservatives. So you're going to – That's for sure. Yeah. You're going to read a lot about that from David Strom. And he'll, he'll start next week. He would start this week, but – Hiring somebody into corporate America is a lengthy process. I'll just put it that way. I, everybody's busting their butts trying to get this thing, you know, expedited as fast as possible because really we did have to expedite this. So everybody on my team is, is, you know, trying to break speed records getting David on board, but it's probably going to be next week. It's just, that's just the way it goes when you're hiring people. And, um, so he'll start next week. You'll see his voice next week, but we got Beach Wellborn. And her first post is up, which is really a great post. I put it for the noon slot because it's really good about uh, Germany. Um, uh, and it's not just Germany, by the way. Later, we also found out it was France. And maybe she'll follow up with that. But Germany is going to impose a windfall profits tax on its green energy producers <laughs> to deal with <laughs> to deal with the failures of its energy policies. And uh yeah, that, that'll work out really well. So Beach has that up. Yeah. Beach Wellborn was known as Tree Hugging Sis for many years in the blogosphere. She was in Coalition of the Swilling. Um, uh, oh, gosh. Um, I think it was Victor Girl's blog was, was the other place that she was at. So she's around. Don Slusher, who um, – and, and Beach is a uh, occasional outside contributor. Don Slusher is going to be an occasional outside contributor as well. She's uh, also doing work for Newsbusters. We brought Karen on full time. Uh, in Karen of course, Townsend. Karen Townsend. Yeah. So she's on full time. Yeah, and, you've now. Got, and you have jazz all along. Jazz and John Sexton. Me, uh, I'm going to be doing writing. I'm still going to be writing. I'll probably be writing a little bit less because I'm going to be focusing on headlines and editing everybody else and and promoting, you know, VIP stuff. Some of my stuff, some of my new efforts are just going to be in the VIP area, too. So uh, but, you know, that's that's what we're doing. That's the mission. The mission is to is to get this in place so that we can really help drive uh, the, the debate in the midterms and not just drive it, but drive our readers to where it's, where all that debate is taking place, which is again, what we're going to be doing with the headline section. So I'm, I'm hoping that people keep a very close eye on the headline section. Of course, if you're a member, you can comment on not just our posts, but the headlines as well. So, um, yeah, it's exciting stuff. Um, and well, I think uh, drudge is gone, so we might as well have a, a new place like you. <laughs> Hey, why not? You know, uh, you know, Bongino yeah. report does really, does really good. And look, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm trying to remember to hat tip Bongino report when I find stuff through them. Uh, same thing with, uh, Lucianne. Uh, and I've already found some links through Lucianne and Bongino report. And I've tried to make sure I hat tip them in the headlines when I do. But I mean, I, I think it's just, uh, we just have to be connected. We need to make sure that we may, remain connected. And I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that. Well, and that's, and as a reader, you get the sense of breadth to the conservative movement <clears throat> and depth. Uh, and um, to me, that's priceless. Uh, you can't, uh, you can't copy that. And it doesn't exist outside the conservative world. It's so, what's the word monochrome over there. You know, I was in the Arctic one time years ago and was in a classroom <clears throat> with the native children and of course, they've never, the tallest thing they've ever seen out, outdoors is moss. <laughs> yeah. There are no trees. There are no trees up there. And so I asked them, I said, what did you think things looked like in the old days? And of course, he'd looked at books and TV and so on. And he said, um, everything was black and white. <laughs> <laughs> I sometimes think that too, because I grew up watching black and white movies, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. But I thought that was a, a one of those precious juvenile insights that uh, 
that kind of open your eyes, you realize, yeah, yeah, it does seem that way. Uh, a lot of the old movie stars are all black and white. Um, so in on the left, everything is black and white, but uh, there's this wonderful rainbow color on the in the conservative movement that uh, – uh, if people patronize it and click on it, and if they just stop, you know, I have people commenting sometimes on my posts on or my posts on Twitter and saying, uh, "Well, CNN and blah 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 blah." And I said, "Well, then don't watch it." Hello, there's plenty of other material to uh, to comment on and watch, but it's almost uh, masochistic, you know. They they want to get angry. It's like, okay, well, there's plenty of stuff at Red State and Hot Air and Town Hall to to get angry about if you want to go there. That's true. That's true. We're trying to cover it all. Well, that's but boy, you've got a real nice boy. That's a lot of new voices you got there, Ed. Yeah, and you know, and and, and I, you know, we're still, you know, I I might still be adding some other outside voices to come in and do occasional. Yeah, contributions. you might be. There was something about a surprise you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, Andrew's going to try to squeeze this out of me, but even though yeah, he is the re- yeah, even though he is the regent of Red Street and the prince of Twitter, <laughs> you know, uh, one of my sons was uh, visiting over the holiday weekend uh, with his fiance, and uh, he wouldn't call me regent. What? He just you know he just kept calling me dad all the time. I I don't I don't understand. You send him over to me, and I will straighten his <laughs> rear end out. <laughs> Sire, yeah. I think is I think Sire is the is the proper. Sire. Uh, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, that's a good one, Sire. Well, let's talk about what you're doing over at Red State because you've got a you've got a new a couple of new posts up over there, and um, yeah, we, definitely we talk about that. First off, you've got um, uh, about Afghanistan. Uh, Malcolm on the right. This is your um, this is your own podcast. Um, yeah. Pardon my anger, but Joe Biden has stained the nation's honor. And you know, this is the thing that really struck me. We'll yeah. Get into what your thoughts are on this, but I'll just frame it with my thoughts here. Was when it was the Thursday speech was first announced. The White House painted it as a speech for the soul of the nation. Yeah, and I'm thinking, you mean the guy who abandoned fourteen thousand Americans in Afghanistan, who let thirteen service members get killed because he didn't um, plan for a. Um, for a, an, evacuation. an evacuation, that's the guy who's going to talk to us about the soul of the uh, of the nation. I mean, I I think that there are things to talk about in that regard, and so I wrote a very lengthy thing on that on Friday because I was so mad. I didn't even watch it, you know, because I just knew it was going to be annoying. So I just read the transcript afterwards, and I got yeah. so furious <laughs> over this yeah. Um, that, um, yeah, and and, and using, I think that. And- Using the Marines for props and the, yeah. and the red lighting and all that they didn't come yeah. out of the transcript, but that that all it just it made me furious too, and that's why I did this audio commentary. So tell us a little bit about your thoughts on this. I mean, I just well, got done blabbing about mine, yeah. so let's hear about no, yours. That's fine. <laughs> uh, this is this is what I think co-hosting is about, Ed. But you'll <laughs> learn this after after you've been in the business a while. Um, <laughs> Well, uh, like you, a year ago, with the botching of the evacuation uh, and Joe Biden you know, in the going against the general's advice and pulling all the troops out, and of course they knew um, that they are going to have to go back in, so they got ready, I guess, on the QT, and uh, of course. Thousands had not been evacuated, and you can't do an evacuation with thousands of people charging the plane. We saw what happened uh, with people falling off the wheel wells and and all of that. Um, So the troops went back in. It was so screwed up. Uh, Not only did they leave billions of dollars in advanced military gear, uh, but they left thousands of Americans yeah. and also thousands of Afghan allies. And we did the same thing, screwing over the lo- the loyal locals who had helped us for years in Vietnam and in Afghanistan with the understanding that they would and their families would be gotten out. And they weren't. And um, sadly, a number of them, Jazz wrote about this a while yeah. back, a number of them, have, have, did they find them? They execute them, they imprison them, torture them, then execute them. 
They execute families. Uh, Biden, <laughs> this is another thing that made me angry. They left all the biometric files for all of the Afghan allies who helped yeah. us. They left them in intact. So Taliban police, security people, all they have to do is get the files. They got the hair color, the blood type, everything they need to track somebody down. So families have been split up, hiding all over the country. Um, and Biden insists on calling the evacuation an extraordinary success. Well, I'm not sorry. I was about to say I'm sorry, but I'm not. Right. Uh, and it got me uh, pissed. And uh, so I did a comment. I had a lot of fun with these Malcolm on the right commentaries. I think we're I'm going to do number 26 this week. Um, they're short, you know, three, four minutes uh, VIP uh, where I just talk about something that the editors like to call it Andy Rooney. But, you know, nobody can imitate him. I'm, it's I'm just me. Uh, but right. the, the, I'm, I'm not always angry. Sometimes I'm sharing personal memories and or whatever, um, how my dad taught me the alphabet and how that shaped my entire life. Um, but uh, this time, I was I just had to let it go. Uh, and so I'm, I'm rather angry. The headline said, I'm sorry, but I wasn't really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not sorry about my feelings over that um, speech either or, or about Jeez, the, dishonorable, just... the dishonorable, the um, dishonorable conduct of, um, of Joe Biden, especially a year ago. And this is almost on exactly on the anniversary, too, which is really yeah. what galled me is almost exactly on the anniversary of him abandoning 14,000 Americans. This guy stood up in front of Independence Hall and tried to lecture us on the soul of America. I, it's just uh, I was so infuriated over that. Well, they just they're they're tone deaf. And that was part of the point of the Sunday column, which is another VIP piece, which was Americans. American politics, there's not much listening going on. You know, Congress yeah. calls it he Congress calls it hearings. It's not. It's a, it's a skit like Saturday Night Live. Uh, they they know the answers before they ask the questions. They ask the questions. The witness tells them the answers they want to have, uh, and um, it's all pretend. Um, and uh, I wanted to write about the inoperability of of politics today uh in in america and it's sad it it doubly sad because we're presenting a uh deteriorating image to the world it yeah. may not be as deteriorated as the world looks at it and thinks it is uh but you know, it's tempting for the bad guys. You know, Putin didn't um, invade Afghanistan. Um, he didn't invade Afghanistan. He didn't invade Ukraine. Right. Uh, he didn't invade Ukraine while uh, Trump was in office. He didn't even start to organize the troops until 60 days after Biden came in um, because he could see the weakness projected. And uh, that's just. It's too bad. And China's doing the same now, strutting around about uh, Taiwan. <clears throat> North Korea has started uh, its ICBM tests again. Uh, so I think we're, we're facing a, um, a tenuous situation here for the next couple of years. The, the midterms, which you've identified at, at, at hot air so, so yeah. well, the midterms are, are absolutely crucial. If people get overconfident, if people give up, um, then he keeps uh, Biden keeps control of Congress. If we get just one house, be nice to get two. But if we just get one house, uh, we can stop a lot of this silliness and this ridiculous spending that's going on. Um, so uh, I I wanted to write about American politics sort of going deaf on itself and uh, the the impact that has on all of us, really. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think it's it's really well done. I'll tell you, and I think I've told you this story before, but I'll just say it again, is that, um, you know, uh, I, I met Norm Coleman once. This is years and years and years ago. I met Norm Coleman once and chatted with him just very briefly. And I forget even where the venue was um, where that happened. 
and it was it was not a private meeting. It was in the it was in the context, and I I, I recall it being like at a conference, right, where there's just a ton of people all all over the place. And I ran into him. I don't know, maybe it was a couple of years later, and this is before his uh, before he lost the election to Al Franken. So this is a long time back. Um, I ran into him at this lunch, and I started to introduce myself to him. He says, "Ed, I know who you are, Ed Morrissey, Hot Air, yeah." Uh, you, you, yeah, you live, yeah. you live near me. And it was like, I was stunned. Yeah. Like, oh, I, I, yeah. Was, I just absolutely stunned. You talk about this in your post about how politicians who are really good can recall all these things because they talk to people and they listen to them. Actually and listen. Actually listen. Don't talk past them. Don't listen for an opportunity to just throw in a couple of, um, you know, uh, you know, bullet points Point, talking points yeah you know, yeah, and, you know I, and i'll tell you one other and you were here for this anecdote and by the way norm coleman ever since has always remembered who i was i was actually at his house yeah, for a fundraiser one time. See, it yeah. blows you it's a nuclear power it for, is for someone they don't have to be politicians doctors whatever right but the, when they remember your names it's so simple and yet so powerful and i'm sure you remember this it's slightly different context of for this anecdote but do you remember when we were at CPAC and this is maybe yes, 11, 12 years ago? You know what I'm talking about, right? We were called back. You and I and um, Gabriel Maller, I think, was the third person, was called back to privately meet with uh, Rick Perry, who was at the time kind of sort of thinking about running for president and actually decided to jump into anything. This may have been 2010. Um, Marsha was there at CPAC with me. My wife was there at CPAC with me. So it had to be 2010. And... Um, we sit down and he goes, he comes in and he's shaking everybody's hand. I don't think we were sitting. Actually, I don't think we were standing. He's shaking everybody's hand and he goes, puts his hand out to my wife. And of course, my wife is blind. And I kind of said, the governor wants to shake your hand. So she put her hand up. And Governor Perry, realizing that she was blind, said, let me talk to you for a minute about Texas. Yeah. And he knelt down and right in front of her and took her hand and talked to her. For like five minutes. And you remember what the photographer, remember what he did with the photographer? Because he had no. a photographer there with him. I, I, actually, I think what happened is he took her over to a, a couple of chairs and they sat and talked for like five minutes before. And we're standing around, right? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. You and me and Gabriel standing around. Hey, uh, we were supposed to be the main point <laughs> of the meeting. Yeah, right. We're going, what the hell? Um, and his photographer came over and started to take a picture and he put his hand up. And he says, no. And he sat down and talked with Marsha about, you know, about the opportunities for um, visually handicapped. He asked her questions. She loves Rick Perry because yeah. he talked to her. He talked yeah. to her like a one on one, was interested in what she had to say. And I mean, it, I, I was very impressed by that. She was very impressed by that. And um, uh, anybody would be. Right. Uh, and it's. Yes, you. it's a it's a power. But it's they have to work at that, you know. I yes. mean, uh, uh, Mike Mansfield. I don't know if many of our listeners remember him. I remember Mike long, Mansfield. Yeah, yeah, the longest serving majority leader in the U.S. Senate. And I came to know him when he was ambassador, the longest serving ambassador to Japan, um, appointed by both Jimmy Carter and Ronald Reagan. Twelve years he was there, uh, and he had that power. And I came to know him a little bit in Tokyo. Uh, and I don't know, a decade later, I was in Washington at the State Department. And I mentioned this in the column. And I see them setting up uh, one of those red velvet rope lines. So I thought, oh, I'll hang around and see who it is. Car pulls up, out hops Mike Mansfield. Then he was deep into his 80s. He's walking up with his entourage, not much of one, but with the aides taking sure. him where he's going to go. And he looks over in this crowd. There's probably 100 people there. And uh, he sees me. And he stops the, the, up the red carpet. And he comes right over, shakes hands. Andy, how are you? And we, had, we, we connected. Now, we hadn't talked in 10 years. And he looks at me. And he says, how's that little girl of yours, Emily? She, uh, she must be just about ready for college now. And I was stunned, and I said, "Well, yes, sir. She started last month." 
Wow. I mean, this guy's in his 80s. And, you know, you understand why he was elected to the House five times and to the Senate five, uh, four times from Montana and the majority leader because he listens to people. He was he ran the Senate when the Senate was what the Senate is supposed to be. That is a, a serious body of equals. And he treated uh, he was in the majority, but he treated Republicans as as equals. They got their say. There was none of this name calling and so on. And it worked. And yep. now we're not talking. We're not. Not only are we not talking to each other and calling each other names, we're not listening to each other. And that turns out to be absolutely crucial. I've seen the politician I worked for in Montana, um, Bill Clinton, announced the policy that was very controversial in Montana. And the media portrayed the governor's response as, uh, yeah, it's okay. Well, it wasn't okay, but he said, look, the feds can do whatever they want on their land, but I'll work with them to ameliorate the local impact. And the town was up in arms. So we went to Hamilton, set up a town hall meeting. Now, most most politicians would say, well, let's go to the other end of the state. He said, let's go listen to them. Let's talk to them. Yeah. So the governor, who everybody was vehemently opposed to at the time, the governor walks into the packed gym on a school night. And what happens? He got a standing ovation. Yeah. They disagreed with him, but he got a standing ovation. Why? Because he came to listen. Yep. And we're not listening much anymore. And when he left after three hours of listening and calling people by names, not names, but by names. Right. He got another standing ovation, and the 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 issue evaporated because okay. everybody came to understand everybody else's view, and they felt, you know, I when when my um, sons were little, uh, when they're babies, literally babies, and they're on the table and they just start to cry and they have a fit and a tantrum. You realize the reason is because they can't communicate. No, I mean they don't know the words. But they, the only way they can communicate is have a tantrum. And that's what we're doing in American politics today, sadly. And I yep. wanted to comment on it. And thank you for the opportunity. Well, it was a great post over there, VIP post over at redstate.com. Because Andrew, again, is the regent of Red State and the prince of Twitter. <laughs> I, I don't know if you have a joke of the day. I'll just throw it out there. Oh, I might uh, I might have one. Well, see, because that's another tradition that we have here. and uh, That's right. You don't have to be a VIP member, though, to get the jokes of the day, which is great. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we have – these are all old ones. But uh, Jimmy Fallon said there was a water main break here on Broadway uh, the other day, and it caused the musical Cats – to cancel a recent performance, or as every guy in line with his date said, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Like, oh, gee, you mean I can't go to a Broadway musical? Oh, golly. About, about felines? No, okay. Uh, let's see. Um so uh, there's another Jimmy Fallon. A reporter went through Hillary Clinton's schedule while she was Secretary of State and found that she and Bill were often apart from each other, sometimes even on different continents. So they asked her why they didn't coordinate their schedules. And Hillary said, oh, we did. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And finally, uh, no, uh, Seth Meyers replay says there's a huge gap clothing warehouse near New York City went up in flames this week. Uh, the clothes burned as employees furiously rushed around trying to refold them. <laughs> <laughs> They do that at Costco too. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god, it's going to burn, but I, they need to be folded neatly. They need, they need to be. Well, that's because if you ever shop at a Costco or a, or a uh, Sam's Club, you know you know that those tables are just usually an ongoing chaotic mess, right? Yeah. I, yeah. I kind of pity the. I kind of pity the. It must be the the first the the latest hire gets that job. Yeah, that's right. That's right. The newbie gets the <laughs> the gets newbie the job. The newbie, they say, okay. You, you have to keep those piles 
correctly folded at all times. And if That's you right. still are sane at the end of the week, we'll find a different <laughs> job for you to do. You're folding jeans the entire week. Yeah. You you've pissed off the manager. You're you're in charge of jean folding this week. <laughs> no, anything but that. Anything but that. All right. Andrew Malcolm, of course. You can find him on Twitter at AH Malcolm. He is the prince of Twitter and at redstate.com, the region of redstate.com. You can find him here every Tuesday. And that's going to keep on going, man, because we just have too much fun on Tuesdays. You bet. You bet. It's not going to throw me aside, I hope. No. No, no, I'm just going to cling to you as long as I possibly can, Andrew. <laughs> yeah. What is it, 13, 14 years now? Uh, it's been, well, for, well, it's been 14 years. Yeah, because we start, well, yeah. It was after the 2008 uh, Republican convention. So that's about this, it's about this time yeah. right now. So yeah, but yeah, I think it's about 14 years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to do it until we get it right. Folks. Yeah, you know, it's a... It's always been, people ask me if I'm a practicing Catholic too. And it's like, yeah, but I need to practice, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations on the uh, on the promotion. Thank you, and congratulations to the readers for getting all this new stuff and new people. And um, uh, I'm going to be checking hot air a lot this week, to, uh, later in the week, to see what this big surprise is. Big surprise, big surprise. All right, Andrew Malcolm, thanks so much. We'll talk to you again next week, sir. Okay, buddy. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. All right. Stand by for one last. T- well, it's an ad. <laughs> it's an ad for the <laughs> subscriptions that Andrew said he wasn't going to do. So stand by for that. And thanks for watching. Thank you for watching and listening to the Ed Morrissey Show podcast. Be sure to subscribe at Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube to get alerted as soon as new episodes get published. You can support The Ed Morrissey Show and Hot Air's VIP reporting by becoming a VIP member, too. Visit hotairvip.com and use the promo code SAVEAMERICA, all one word, for 40% off your membership. Choose VIP Gold and gain membership to access to all of the town hall sites. Thanks again for watching and listening.